Hello and good morning, Glenn. How are you doing today? I'm uh, very good. How are you doing, Aaron? Are you good? Absolutely fantastic, except I think you should take your book back and, and change it to 501 Extraordinary Places to Eat Around the Globe because you forgot to mention my kitchen. You forgot to mention my kitchen, <laughs> Glenn. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ever so sorry, but you know there'll be a third edition. You know there will, and you've just, uh, you've just given me a way in. So. <laughs> I, I love this book because I've always believed in the tradition of the roots of, of where food comes from. And you really do open up the, the door for us to climb in and study what everybody else is doing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a big part of the book, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's, 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 I'm glad you picked up on that, really. So, you know, the, these t- traditions that exist in, in certain places, you know, it's like eating, eating the land's history. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of that, too. Well, you've got to have a lot of courage because when you step into a small village or a town that really doesn't have the luxury of the larger cities, I mean, but you're going to try the food anyway. I mean, that that takes a lot of courage. But it's like anything, you know, when you go on holiday and there's a and there's some water to swim in, and you find on the first day you're a little bit within yourself, and by the seventh day, you know, you're doing flips underwater. And food travels like that, really. You know, the more you do it, the more you know what you can get away with. You know, you know, the more you know which rules to observe and which ones to ignore, where you can drink the water, where you should try the salads. Uh, but it's something that builds, and the more you do it, the more you'll want to do it. It's like yeah. anything, really. You bring up a really interesting point is when, it, when it comes to drinking and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of these beer companies and wine companies talk about it's in the water, it's in the water. Is it true when it comes to food as well? Is it the water in that particular location? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I'm a big believer in what the French call terroir. And, uh, it, you know, the, the land contributes to the flavor of things. I was in, I, I don't go away as much as you think, but I was in the French Alps recently and I had some of their sparkling mineral water and it was I can't believe how excited I got about water, you know, yeah. and that's just to drink. So, but what the animals eat, what the plants drink, you know, all of that goes into into the taste, you know, and that's why the same thing can taste so distinct, distinctly different in different parts of the world. So I'm a big believer in that, but, you know, I'm not going to hit you with any science. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in the beef in Argentina that really makes it stick out around the world? Well, I can only assume that it must be because Argentina, you look at it at a map, it's such a big, sparsely populated country, and they have such enormous pastures where the, where the cows can roam, you know. It's a bit like the south of America, I suppose. But uh, whatever they do, they produce the juiciest steaks you can imagine, and they all go through Buenos Aires, you know, that's the starting point. And if you go to Buenos Aires and you go, you go to, I don't know, somewhere like this Neville in the San Telmo area, you'll get a perfectly grilled steak, it will be juicy and firm at the same time, and you'll wash it down with a big big glass of red Malbec, which will sort of trample the, the meat down into your stomach the way that heavy wine does. And uh, But they and they eat steak breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a bit wow. of a cliche, I suppose. But if, if you want steak, go there. That's what I would say. One, one of my favorite places inside your book, which is titled Food Journeys of a Lifetime, Marrakesh. I mean, they've got it right. I mean, I, when it comes to soups, for me, it's all about the spices. I love spices, and so do the people of Marrakesh. Absolutely. Well, Marrakesh, I think, was the place where I had my uh, epiphany that I cared more about food when I traveled than anything else. You know, And it wasn't just the spices. It was the brochettes, which are the kind of meat kebabs that, that suddenly appear come sundown in the main square and they're tagines and they're, you know, they're tiny little salads, so refreshing. And it was so hot when I was there that I had, I had energy, I had no energy to do anything but eat and eat I did. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think Marrakesh was the place that turned me around. So I would absolutely recommend going there. The market is such a great place. And I'm not talking about like a grocery store market. I'm, I'm talking about like the, 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 the market in Seattle where you got the seafood or even in Charleston, you've got the markets there and stuff like that. It's so important to go to a market to build, isn't it? Well, do you know, the market, so if you, if you, if you feel that, you know, you are, you're in, into culinary tourism and you want to put food at the heart of your travel, and you want to get out beyond your resort. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with just eating the resort, but if you want to get out there, the market's such an easy first step. And, you know, you go and you see how things are piled up, and, you know, you talk about Marrakesh, those big you know, big cones of spices piled up high. But, you know, like also, like the fish market in Seattle is a good, a good example, you know. Uh, you know, the markets in Mexico City, they're great first steps on your way 
to taking food a bit more seriously when you travel, you know. And they can be bustly, they can be hectic, but, you know, hold your nerve, haggle a bit, you know, and uh, it's a good experience, really, and everywhere has them. So I, between the two of us here, because we both love food and we both have traveled so much, does Philadelphia really have the best Philly cheesecake steak? Yeah, well, we're saying so. You know, it's funny you say that because I'm sat, I'm, I'm sat here in London and, and opposite me is a pub that does this wonderful Philly cheese, cheese steaks. But I think the difference is the one in the pub opposite me is quite a refined, sedate affair. And I think what, what you really want on a day like today, it's cold where I am, is you want the, the mess of a Philly cheese steak, you know. So if you go, you know, I'd, I'd love to, if I could wave a wand now and, and, and be at Pat's, <laughs> Pat's Kick of Steaks in Passion Avenue or in Gino's in Ninth, I'd do it. Or if I could go down to the Delaware River and go to John's Roast Pork or Tony Luke's and I could have a, a Philly cheese steak or a garlicky roast pork sandwich, you know. With, with the spicy greens, oh, I'd be in hog heaven. So uh, yeah, I, it's a good it's a good place for sandwiches, isn't it? So how open are families when it comes to sharing those recipes? Because I mean, I mean, that's what's great about this book is that you really take us inside the kitchen, inside the recipes and things like that. Are, are people open in sharing those 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 family traditions? Yeah, they are. You know, I edit my other with my other hat on. I edit a food and travel mag for National Geographic and. We have recipes in every issue, and some of them are from chefs and some of them from cookbooks, but often we do get them from families. And, you know, they're more willing than you might think. You know, I mean, often, often the challenge is not the, the willingness. It's, the, uh, it's getting really good home cooks to pin down the ingredients to paper. You know, things they do by instinct mm-hmm. and have done for years and they learn from the grandparents, you know. So the challenge more is, is to get these recipes down rather than the, the people being willing to share them. But, you know, when someone's, someone's a really good home cook, they'll share the recipe, but they'll know you're not going to do it as good as them. So they're not, they tend not to be as insecure about it as you might think. Wow. But uh, recipes that have been passed down in, in, in places where the cooking has been good for decades, I mean, they're the... That's the best. Wow. Well, congratulations on Food Journeys of a Lifetime. This is truly a pocketbook for someone to, to ba- basically to travel around the world and to discover new things in their own towns as well. Glenn, you've got to come back to the show anytime in the future. I'd love to. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? And stay warm. Yes, you too. <laughs> you too. Good to talk. <laughs>